week we're going to continue our discussion on function decorators. Last week we talked and illustrated a few concepts needed to understand decorators, such as callables. We used some class decorators and show you how this mechanism worked. This week we're going to be expanding our focus to function decorators and really drilling down on when function decorators are needed and how to use them. We're going to be trying a new format this week. I'm going to be zooming a lot closer in on the code. I've gotten a few emails from some of the subscribers saying that it could be a lot more focused, especially when viewing it on their mobile platforms or iPads. So this week I'm going to be focusing completely on my editor. Um, if you guys have any suggestions in the future, please just email me or tweet at me at, at neckbeardrepub. So in last week's screencast, we defined a decorator merely something that is a callable and returns a callable. When we were using classes last week, we needed to find the dunder underscore call function in order for it to be a callable, so we then could use it as a decorator. With functions, functions are inherently callable. They're meant to be called. So in order to write a decorator using a function, you simply define a function. So we're going to use, we're going to do a little bit of an example which takes some texts and causes it to be italicized. So when we print it, it'll have italic blocks on either side. So we're going to go define a method that is called make italics. It's a function that takes a function. So our function that we're passing into our, our, our decorator is called func. And then we're going to call a little method inside here that's called, so you know, because we have to return a callable, we have to pass our function down into another callable. So we're going to re end up returning this function here. We're going to call this wraps. You can call it whatever you want, but I tend to end up using wraps. You'll understand in a bit why I chose that. But we'll define a callable here that merely returns returns uh, italicized version of what we're looking for. We're gonna call the function here, the function that we passed in, plus another string that is closing the italic block, like so. And we're going to return the callable, which is wraps in this case. We're gonna return wraps and we've defined our decorator. We're going to then define a main. We're going to print this out. We're going to define our main method, which which, uh, which defines, which returns a word that we'd like to return. Let's say hello. Let's say we want to italicize hello. Missing a colon up here. And we're going to use our decorator, make italic. So. So what's going on here is we have a function decorator, which takes a function. So this is getting past the main function. We're then defining a callable that we end up returning. So a decorator is a callable that returns a callable, that takes a callable and returns a callable. We're going to be calling our function wrapped with uh, italicis. When we run our main function, it returns the string hello. So what we should end up getting is italics, hello, close italics in our end output, which will be print at the end here. And then we, re we are returning the callable, that callable gets executed, and we print it. So by simply pressing Control B, you'll see that our function has been run like we hoped it would. Now, the interesting here th that you may not notice is that this function here is an inner function. So if you're not familiar with this, is a function defined within a function. So I can go ahead and define as many of these as I want, and they will be all in the scope of the make italic function. So they can be called inside here without much issue. So if we wanted to go ahead and use these functions and leverage them, much like functions, much like how functions are defined under classes, they can also be defined under functions. This is not something I would do generally because it makes it harder to read, but they do come in very handy when dealing with functions, function decorators. Now you may be wondering if is it possible to chain decorators. So let's just quickly add a function that writes and makes our italicized text bold text as well. So we're going to just define our method here to make bold. We are going to change the block HTML block statements that it wraps it in to so that it reflects bold, and we are then going to pass at make bold. So just before we continue this, I'd like you to stop the video, maybe take a moment to see and tell me how this would actually play out. Um, we're going to run it now. So as you can see is the main, the make italic function is run. 
it returns its function and then it then passes to the bold decorator the portion that I have highlighted here it wraps it with the bold decorator the bold HTML blocks and that result is printed so you can chain as many decorators as you want and they will be run as they are in order so it'll run which is closest to the function so make italic then it'll run make bold we'll call our dunder screencast we gave you a few examples of attributes functions have which are dot dunder name and dot dunder doc so if we print each of these you should what you should see is the name of the function which is main in this particular case and its doc string respectively by printing this so it might be interesting when we see that it actually prints wraps and none so what the way our wrapping works is that we are wrapping and scoping away the main function which is func here away from the actual context in the application so if we're rewriting these and we need it for the doc strings to be present if you're using something like sphinx or some other documentation tool this is how they look up the name of the function and its doc string now when you wrap the function or you mask it away from the calling function it ends up being scoped away by the wraps here in order to avoid this what you need to do is import wraps from func tools so from func tools import wrap this allows the function to be to carry through and include its name and doc string when you end up actually using them having understood this we're going to now apply the wraps decorator to our functions so we've poorly named our functions here so we're going to just change these to wrapped and we're going to apply the at wraps decorator which simply takes our function bonus points to those of you who can understand what is happening here all that this decorator does is takes the function here it's probably calling and asking for its name and doc string inside there and once it has that it's setting it to the function that we're decorating so it'll go dunder so wrap dot dunder name is equal to funk dot dunder name and then passing it through and that's all that this function particularly does it might do some other assignments to keep other things from getting masked but that's all it's essentially doing so before you saw it was printing wraps and none now you should see that it's printing the main function the actual name of the function we are calling and its docs in its respective doc string this concludes our talk on function decorators on how to create them how to avoid masking as well as chaining function decorators till next week